Hi everybody, my name is Paul. And I am Rebecca. And we explore old abandoned routes, essentially. Today you find us on an abandoned canal. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking where we are now is not actually abandoned because there's a couple of boats, there's a lovely canal basin in front of us. And yeah, so it looks not abandoned. Yes. However, if you have a quick look on Google Maps and you go about 400 meters around the corner, that is the end of this restored canal basin. That's it, about 400 meters. So join us today as we explore the abandoned Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal, also known as the Hereford and Gloucester Canal. So the first part of today's journey along the Herefordshire and Gloucester Canal sees us on the southern section. Now much of this was overtaken or built over by a railway sort of 1880s, so not a lot survives. But if you have a look on some old National Library of Scotland maps, you can see the odd bit where it sticks out from the railway. And here, just to the east of Newent, is a great example of that because ahead of us now is the cut of the abandoned canal where it curved around this slope ahead of us on the south side of Newent. Super. Ooh. That's quite, a, we're quite, it's quite a deep cut, isn't it? It is. On, on a, a lot of the old abandoned canals we see, we don't see this so much, but it's much more, much more shallow. So we're just walking this very beautiful bit of the, uh, the canal just north of Newent. And over there, in fact, I can see it through there, is a, a branch line, a branch line on the canal. It's called the coal branch line to try and take advantage of a coal seam that was just over there. Didn't take off because the coal was apparently not that good a quality. And we bumped into some members, uh, three people walking this part of the canal. One of them just so happens to be the secretary. I promise it wasn't organized. So we'll just have a very quick chat with them. So we did bump into you guys um, up on the road by complete chance. Right. Do you want to introduce us? Who you, who you are? What are your aims? What are you up to? We, we ought to start with the lady first. Ginny, would you like to say? Ginny, I've lived in this area for six years and um, just want to be involved with canal restoration. But understand from previous experience that it doesn't happen overnight. And therefore, my, my sort of task, if you like, is to encourage as many people to volunteer as possible. So what's, what's the next project? What, 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 what are we doing today? Well, yeah, we're finding out about the canal because uh, I'm Tony, uh, mate Dave, Dave and uh, we've only joined the Canal Trust very recently. Um, and so we want to find out what has been done on the canal. And it's got a very interesting modern history as this canal because some work, a lot of work started in the late 80s and early 90s and bits were opened up. Yeah. And then sort of things went a bit quiet for one reason or another. But now there's new people joining, there's a new chairman and we're really hoping that we can make a difference and, and make things start to happen again. Um, but what it needs is people. It needs people and it needs, pe and it needs a bit of money and it needs landowner permission. With those three things, money, people and landowners, yeah. you can build yourself a canal. We, we work on a section at Yark Hill and Monkhide, which had been uh, dug out back in 1992 with the Inland Waterways yeah. Authority and the volunteers there. And uh, it's, it's really extreme gardening now. So, so what can people do to help? Um, we, we, obviously there's make a donation, but I'm sure you guys, as you've already sort of alluded to, people. Well, there, there are working groups along the length of the canal, um, which are local little communities in their own right. Well, even if you don't have any specific skills, um, it's just lovely to come out and be part of the big family to, yeah. to help it come forward. We, we've got, uh, I mean, with joint members and family members and things, we've got around a thousand, just over a thousand members at the yeah. moment of the Canal Trust. But of course, there's a lot more of the people than that yeah. in Gloucester and Hereford, yes. who probably would if they knew about it. Mm. Yeah. So get on the website. Get on the website. Drop you an email. That's the one. And get the ball rolling. Yep. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, as lovely well. to I meet you. After yeah, the yeah, problems yeah. that Ralph had and you had to move things. I just think it's amazing. I'm sorry. I just think it's amazing we bumped into yeah, each other. Yeah. They also aren't aware of the, the solution to the mystery. Mm -hmm. The mystery being the coal branch just to our west, sorry, 30 yards, that sloped off around the, 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 the hill there. 
is about 10 foot higher. Now there are no more locks on this section, mm -hmm. they said. There never was any more locks on nope. this section. And he's looked at one of Dave looked at one of the old looked maps. Looked at one of the old maps, yeah. And it's not on there, so it's not even like it was and then it got de demolished. Yeah, so how is it, everybody? Here's your question for the day. How is it that the coal branch is around about 10 foot higher than the canal just here, um, when it joins around about 100 yards ahead? I think there is a lock, and there must have been a lock just to the north. So let's have a quick look through here if we can. I think through there, there must have been the remnants of a lock because it splits just there um, into the two branches, or the southern and the, and the coal branch, and all of a sudden down there it's a lot steeper. So here, there must have been a lock. just cross a mountain of fields, just trying to find the next section of the canal south of Ledbury, um, and two tunnels. The tunnels are gonna form part of a separate video because there's a lot of info about them and a lot of fascination, so join us uh, in a few weeks. So we're just speaking about the history of the canal and how it formed. In 1777, this canal was first conceived as a route. John Whitworth was involved, uh, Josiah Clowes, we've seen both of those two before. Um, but it took almost another 20 years to get things uh, built and underway. And I have no idea where we're going. I think we're going down the hill there, Rebecca. Okay. So I think it opened in 1798. Is that correct? That sounds right. 1798. John Whitworth has, had helped build the Thames and Seven Canal. So he's not sort of unfamiliar with this area and the landscape and how to navigate it. But the amount of times it was surveyed, resurveyed to keep things going was uh, quite a surprise. We think that massive drop down there, probably about 15 feet, the culvert, is probably a feeder for the canal because there is a, um, a pond the other side of the M50 and this culvert gets deeper and deeper and heads into the trees behind us, which is where you find the northern portal of the tunnel. Again, another video ah, that goes down that way down there to the trees above the northern portal and already we've come to some masonry which we presume again is for the, the, the feed of the leak that we found there that goes down into the canal and there's a steep drop down I feel like we're going to find something quite positive here. So we've just done our bit for the tunnel video Oxenholm tunnel just down there in that big cre crevice we're now heading further north on the next section of our canal journey. So 1798 opened and at a huge cost, but only opened as far as uh, Ledbury or one mile south of Ledbury. That was it, they're out of money now. So this part of it was had envisaged to hold 33,000 tonnes a year of, of goods. Well, it wasn't gonna do that because they'd only made it as far as Ledbury. Now, the next issue they had was traversing uh, from Ledbury across to Herefordshire. Oh. Oh. I'm shattered. Me too. It's late already. Yeah. We're behind. We started a bit late to be fair. We started we? late, yeah. We're now between the tunnels. We're between uh, Oxenholm, Oxenhall. Oxenhall and Asperton Tunnel. And it's a beautiful section. We've got some wild garlic in front of us, which is now all flowered. Yeah, it's pretty. It's beautiful. But for the time being, onwards to I've no idea, Ledby direction, I guess. I guess so. So, between the two tunnels, we're now nearly Ashburton uh, Tunnel on the uh, northern part of this canal, and this section is extremely flooded. And apparently that's because the guys at the Trust were saying that that way is a big dam in place. That's what they hope to remove at some point during the, the, the reintroduction of this canal. And uh, it's probably now around about four or five deeper, four or five feet deeper than what it should be. It's hiding a towpath. Ashburton Tunnel itself has a towpath on the left-hand side. And I think once they take out that plug that is the dam, then of course it will uh, de dewater this area to a significant amount that they can then start to look at what shape the tunnel is in. If I get trampled by a cow. Um, 
So Rebecca, Rebecca, after you. Um, <laughs> really? There's one right by my door. <laughs> So we, you join us back now um, between Ledbury and Herefordshire and we're on the, the, the last section that was built of this canal. They built this, um, this part of it in sections and every time they completed a bit they opened it, had a wharf and tried to claim a bit of money back from it. And um, we've just had the permission to have a look at the Skew Bridge, which is, I've, we've seen some Skew Bridges in our time, but goodness me. That's, that's definitely Skew. That's, that's <laughs> something else. And also we've been lucky enough to be joined again by Dave and Tony. And if I jog forward a few yards, we're not going to call them Dave and Tony, we're going to call them the Oracle and the Encyclopedia, because they are just full of information. It's wonderful. Um, and it makes journeys like this so much more enjoyable when there's a wealth of information. This bit is interesting because yeah. when, when they were working on the canal in um, the 90s, um, there's just a bit of canal down there, but the chap yeah. who owns it actually took out this extra bit to make a turning point, oh, winding see. hole of course, yes. um, right. so that <clears throat> he could do little trips between the main road and here. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So one of the one of the fascinating things that we read um, up before we arrived was um, again Stephen Ballard uh, <clears throat> trying to raise more funds as he was building this second phase, and apparently he caught the train to Birmingham and commented on what a comfortable, easy ride that was. And you just wonder how much I always wonder this: how much at that time, you know, sort of 1820s, 30s, and 40s, what an amazing time that would have been to sort of be alive and see the change in the transport, which revolutionised everything once again from the canals to the railways, and and how much that sort of occurred to him, that, you know. Our final stop for today was just to the east of Monkhide and the site of an old mill. Another mystery played out before us as the setup here, to date in our eyes, is unique. But right now we're looking at, um, again, the accommodation. I almost thought that was a tunnel. Um, but that's another, what they call it, an accommodation bridge. See, this is one of those places that we would never have found if we hadn't talked to you guys. So right behind us uh, there, you can't really see much because obviously the trees and the foes, was an old mill, Monk Hyde. What's it called, Monk Hyde? Was it called? Yeah, oh, Hyde yeah, yeah, uh, Mill. Yeah. Um, and they fed the water to that in a very different way because of the coming of the canal. Um, I'm not going to attempt to describe it for you, we'll leave that to uh, Dave shortly. Or Paul in edit mode. Firstly, we found this online. This is a plan view of the canal. Now, north being at the top of the screen. What does this look like now on the ground? Well, over to Dave, who is also pointing north. Yeah. So, what are we looking at there, Dave? What so we are, to me, to me we, this is the canal basin, so we're on the towpath side, yeah. on the south side. And then, just over the nettles there, you can see an exit, Yeah. and that's the exit of water that was brought from the Loddon yep. to feed the canal. Yeah. The canal then fed the meal. Now that is rare, if not unique. It's, it's fascinating to see the engineering they had to do on the spot, if you will, to try and accommodate uh, what was already here. And in this case of the mill that was just there, and they took river, uh, river? They took water from the river a lot and further north, about 150 yards north, down a culvert, which is just down here, into the canal. The canal then fed the mill, which I think is um, potentially unique. Uh, but it's above us now there is this leet. So I assume we have to travel uphill to be able to take water out of the Loddon, but we'll find out in a moment. So this map looks like it still shows the old leet. And if we follow it up to the north for quite some time through this woodland and orchid, well, then we come to the site of its probable entry point, at least according to those maps, because here is a sluice gate. Now, that would indicate, at least in part, a tunnel from this point, because the land does go about three or four metres above us, behind us, in the orchid. At the time, though, we couldn't find an entry point, so I think, once again, it's a bit of a vegetation clear here, and it may unravel the entry point for that tunnel or leet or culvert. 
So back towards the mill, and you can see some of the embankment on the way for this leet, and how it obviously there, at this point, carried the water south from the River Loddon. Now, after a dig around on the north side of the canal here, guess what we found? Well, yep, a beautiful section of the culvert which led straight into the canal. As you can see, it doesn't look in too bad a shape and maybe even purposely backfilled here. Not 100% sure. We'd love to spend some more time here with the team uncovering some of the canal's old secrets and maybe removing a whole bunch of the vegetation here, which would probably reveal a lot more. But at this point, it's 7 pm in the evening. Right, Dave and Tony have given us so much information to be going on with. Um, how I'm going to put this video together, I have no idea, but we'll see what comes out. Um, a huge thanks to the um, Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal Trust, and in particular, uh, Ginny, Tony and Dave, who have made the day so much more enjoyable than what it would have been with all the info we found. Um, so make sure you, uh, you click on the link, and if you're local or localish and you want to be involved with a, a project of helping them restore this canal, you should definitely do that because oh, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of mysteries to solve and there's a lot of work to be done so do join them by clicking on the link in the description below um, and from Rebecca and I we'll see you uh, next Sunday 5pm on the channel and can I say thank you very much for both of you to come to this oh. lovely part of therapy it's, it's been a pleasure <laughs> thank you